Virtually all the energy used to make these large vehicles come to a quick stop is absorbed into the brake drums as heat. The ability of the brake drums to stop a vehicle has become even more important in the last few years. Trucks are becoming more friction free by utilizing radial tires, streamlined body shapes and less powertrain friction. This reduced friction increases fuel mileage. However, the brakes must now do more work to decrease vehicle speed. So one penalty we pay for efficient trucks is the need for greater braking effort, which means today's brake drums must be able to handle more stress than ever before. This video will address the maintenance of the brake drums on the truck and trailer. It will also enable the maintenance technician to determine the root cause of brake drum failures and when to remove them from service. Maintenance groups should review all maintenance materials they receive from truck, axle and brake suppliers and incorporate their recommendations in their maintenance programs. Let's examine some brake drums that have been removed from service. Our first brake drum surface has very deep wear. However, the wear is uniform across the drum surface. Deep wear can be easily seen at the edge of the brake drum where the rub path from the lining starts. To determine the amount of wear, place a brake drum diameter gauge in at least two points near the bottom of the drum and near the top. At each height, take two measurements at 90 degrees to each other. If any of these measurements are 120 thousandths of an inch over nominal diameter, for example, 16 and 620 thousandths of an inch on a 16 and a half inch brake drum, and 15 and 120 thousandths of an inch on a 15 inch brake drum, the drum must be discarded. This is the amount of wear that brake drum manufacturers set up in the 1960s to be the maximum safe diameter at which brake drums can be operated. This discard dimension is permanently marked on the brake drum. This dimension can also be found in the Maintenance Council Recommended Practice RP608. Normal wear is the most common cause for removal of a brake drum from service. It is the responsibility of each fleet maintenance manager to determine, based on fleet history, the approximate wear rate of tractor drums, front and rear, and trailer drums to assure removal of brake drums before they become worn beyond the maximum diameter noted on the drum. For example, if a drum, after two lining changes, shows 90 thousandths of an inch of wear, then this fleet is wearing at a rate of about 45 thousandths of an inch of iron off the drum per lining change. If they wait until the third lining change to scrap the drum, the drum would be worn to 135 thousandths of an inch over nominal, and therefore would exceed the discard diameter and would be in a weakened condition. In this particular fleet, the correct practice would be to remove the brake drum on the second lining change, even though the drum still has 30 thousandths of an inch of wear left. Remember, a drum worn oversized is weakened and unsafe. There are several reasons for excessive uniform wear on a brake drum besides normal wear. If brake drum wear is excessive, check for the following conditions. Dragging brakes can be caused by worn camshaft bushings, malfunctioning relay valves, malfunctioning auto slacks, manual or auto slacks set too tight, bent air chamber push rods, weak or broken air chamber or weak or broken shoe return springs. Brake dragging can also be caused by swelling and or growth of new linings, total vehicle air brake system imbalance, imbalanced brake apply and release threshold pressures, clogged air exhaust ports, and restricted or pinched hose or tube. Brake imbalance may also cause deep uniform wear. Imbalance may be a result of pneumatic imbalance between axles or incorrect or malfunctioning relay valves. Imbalance can occur when OEM certified linings are replaced with linings having different friction characteristics. These linings will do excessive work or fail to do their share of work. Incorrect brake power, that is wrong slack lengths and or air chamber sizes may cause brake imbalance. Also imbalanced brake apply and release threshold pressure will likely cause brake imbalance. Excessive brake drum wear can occur when the operator is exceeding the brake capacity of the vehicle or because of improper driving techniques used by the driver. Finally, excessive dirt in the brake may contribute to drum wear. This is a very difficult problem to resolve. Some linings are more tolerant of dirt than others. As a rule of thumb, if dust shields are not in place, add them. 
If they are already in place, try running without them. Dust shields are designed to keep contaminants out of the brake assemblies, but it does not always work. Let's look at another out-of-service brake drum. This drum has deep wear on one side only. There is no evidence of hot spotting anywhere. This out-of-service problem is caused when the brake drum is not concentric to the bearing center line of the hub itself. There are several reasons why this may occur. The brake drum was dropped or bent, machined out of round, incorrectly assembled onto the pilot, or the drum to pilot fit has too much play. This may occur when the mating hub or wheel pilot was machined undersized, the hub or wheel bearing bores are not in line, the hub or wheel pilots are not concentric to bearing bores, or the brake drum was assembled onto dirty or corroded hub pilots. This brake drum is out of service because it has uniform heat checking. Heat checking that has now reached two inches length or more. Remember, anytime heat checks are longer than two inches, the cracks are typically very deep and the drum must be removed from service. There are several reasons why this may occur. Heavy braking is a possible cause. Heavy braking is a result of an inadequate braking system for the operation, linings that are not OEM approved, or poor driver technique. Heavy brake drum usage that causes the drum to work at elevated temperatures are applications in inner cities and construction. Dragging brakes can also do this damage, and they are caused by malfunctioning relay valves, malfunctioning automatic slack adjusters, manual or automatic slack adjusters that are set incorrectly, bent air chamber push rods, weak or broken return springs, lining swell, or worn camshaft bushings. Uniform heat checking may be caused by brake imbalance, which is a result of pneumatic imbalance between axles, incorrect or malfunctioning relay valves, linings that are not OEM approved, incorrect brake power or imbalanced brake apply and release threshold pressures. In addition, uniform heat checking could be caused by bent brake spiders or shoes, preventing the shoes from contacting the brake surface uniformly. With all of these possible causes for uniform heat checking, it's easy to see brake drums must be checked frequently and scrapped when no longer serviceable. This brake drum is out of service due to heat checking on only one side of the drum. There is no excessive wear or hot spotting. This happens when a brake drum is not concentric to the linings and may occur with deep wear on the same side. There are several reasons why this may occur. The brake drum was dropped or bent, machined out of round, incorrectly assembled onto the pilot, or the drum to pilot fit has too much play. This may occur when the mating hub or wheel pilot was machined undersized, the hub or wheel bearing bores are not in line, the hub or wheel pilots are not concentric to bearing bores, or the brake drum was assembled onto dirty or corroded hub pilots. This drum was removed from service when uniform hot spotting was discovered around the brake surface. These black spots are technically known as martensite. These hot spots are hard and cannot be removed by turning. This drum must be scrapped. This hot spotting typically occurs when the brake linings and drum mating surfaces are burnished too slowly. Dragging brakes may cause this to happen, but it most often occurs when an operator's break-in technique uses light 9 PSI dragging stops rather than 20 PSI or greater snubs. Brake lining swell due to poorly made linings may also cause the surfaces to burnish too slowly. Brake lining swell is the increase in size of lining when it is heated. If it does not return to its original thickness when it cools, the new thickness increase is defined as growth. Extremely hard linings can cause hot spotting even if the operator does snub the brakes properly. These linings just will not burnish correctly and mate with the brake drums before hot spots are created. This drum was removed from service with excessive hot spotting on one side only. The spotting is very severe. These hot spots are created similarly to uniform hot spots, often occurring with a very slight runout. This is aggravated further by localized hot spotting, which pulls the brake into a D-shaped cross section. Hot spotting on one side, like one-sided deep wear and heat checking, occurs when the brake drum is not initially concentric to the lining. Please be aware of the many causes for this problem as stated earlier. 
Any one of these failures may result or a combination of the three. Another problem that will put a drum out of service is hot spotting in three places, equally spaced on a brake drum. This is an infrequent type of failure that occurs when brake linings and the drums do not burnish in quickly enough. Dragging brakes, braking with light dragging stops rather than snubs, or poor quality linings that swell will cause this problem. This type of hot spotting can also be the result of an uneven brake surface contour caused by excessive chuck pressure when the brake drum was finish machined in the lathe. This is a manufacturing problem. Occasionally brake drums are removed from service because they become polished or glazed. This has been a problem with some non-asbestos linings. It may occur when braking is done with low pressure dragging stops, linings that are not aggressive enough, or linings that are not original equipment approved. This drum was scrapped due to scoring. When the scoring exceeds the maximum diameter for the brake drum, the drum must be scrapped, even though the rest of the drum looks good. For example, on a 16 and a half inch diameter drum, a groove of 16 and 620 thousandths of an inch in diameter or greater would scrap the drum. Scoring can be a result of dirt or foreign material entering the brake and becoming embedded in the lining. In this case, add dust shields if they are not in use, remove dust shields if they were in place. Linings worn to the rivets will cause scoring. This will result in scrapping of the drum. The use of linings that are not OEM approved can also cause scoring. This brake drum has turned blue from excessive heat and must be removed from service. Excessive heat is generated when there is a braking effort imbalance between the axles and the wheel ends. Other causes are poor driver techniques, dragging brakes, linings that are not OEM approved, or a brake system that is inadequate for the operation. This drum has a broken bolting flange, but the brake surface is not cracked. This is a fairly rare occurrence, but can occur when there is an assembly interference. The most common type occurs when the brake drum is not seated properly on the hub or wheel pilot. Causes of improper seating are incorrect pilots, corroded mounting surfaces, crevice corrosion on aluminum hub drum assemblies, or if the pilot of an iron or aluminum hub is not cleaned properly prior to drum assembly. The clearance to assemble a brake drum onto the pilot of the hub or a wheel can be as tight as one thousandth of an inch clearance or as loose as seven thousandths of an inch clearance. This is a fairly snug fit and requires clean pilot surfaces for proper assembly. Fractured bolting flanges can occur when assembling an incorrect brake drum onto a spoke wheel. The brake drum actually interferes on the back of the spoke bevels before the drum fully seats on the brake drum bosses. When the fasteners are tightened, the clamping load cracks the flanges. Finally, fracturing of the bolting flange may occur if both brake shoes are not making simultaneous contact with the drum. This is caused by a brake assembly which does not cam the shoes concentric to the brake drum. This is a failure mode that occurs when the brake surface is cracked through due to excessive wear, heat checking, or hot spotting, or any combination of the above. The expanding shoes are then sometimes able to unwrap the brake drum structure from the bolting flange without it breaking into multiple sectors. This drum failed because it has been cracked through the brake surface. It shows no sign of wear, no heat checking, and no hot spots. Cracking like this can be caused when the parking brake is set while the brakes are extremely hot. The cooling drum contracts on the rigid brake shoes with enough force to crack the drum. Brake drum pilot interference with the hub or wheel pilot could also crack the drum. If a drum is forced onto the pilot while interference is present, the entire cross section of the drum may crack. The drum may have been cracked prior to assembly, either when manufactured or through rough handling. Brake drums with worn brake drum bolt holes must be removed from service because the drum pilot will also be worn and run out in the brake drum will occur. It is most likely that the mating hub or wheel pilots have been ruined and will need to be replaced. When installing replacement drums, pay attention to the proper torque required for the brake drum fasteners, as shown here. Don't guess. Check torques with a torque wrench. This brake drum had to be taken out of service because it is thoroughly soaked with oil. 
It is virtually impossible to reverse damage caused by oil penetration in a brake drum because it soaks into the graphite of the iron itself. Oil penetration is usually caused by leaky wheel or hub seals. Preventive maintenance is the key to avoiding potential problems and drum failure. Here are a few guidelines for good preventive maintenance. Do not become overly concerned in saving weight in brake drums. Heavier brake drums in general are better than lighter ones because they will store more energy as heat and will run cooler. This affects the life and performance of all brake components. Various types of hot spotting can be better prevented by specifying VDW X10 drums or breaking in new linings and brake drums using 20 PSI or greater snubs for braking rather than light 9 PSI dragging stops. Drums with severe Martin sight or hot spots must be discarded. Brake drums must be discarded when they exceed the maximum specified brake surface diameter. It's the law. It is not cost effective to rebore brake drums. It is very difficult to maintain rebored brake drums within the maximum diameter the law requires. Additionally, rebored drums will typically never be as accurate as the original equipment because the original drums are totally machined with one chucking operation. It is especially important that the brake surface is concentric to the bearings within 15 thousandths of an inch TIR. Make sure all components are clean and free of corrosion prior to reassembly. This is especially true of the close-fitting pilot of the brake drum onto the hub pilot and the mating hub and bolt flanges. Dirt, rust, and paint in this area cause runout, which greatly shortens drum and lining life. Brake drums must be discarded when any of the heat checks have reached two inches or more in length. Use OEM approved replacement linings. Vehicles are usually certified to pass FMVSS 121 with original equipment only. Machine to balance removes a very small amount of metal to bring the drum into balance rather than welding steel weights to the drum. Use machine to balance brake drums instead of weld weight balance. The advantages add up to longer drum life, less maintenance, and safer operation. Once again, learning to recognize drum brake failures and their causes is a vital part of preventive maintenance. The information and guidelines provided in this program will help your brakes perform longer, legally, and with less headaches. You will also improve the safety of your vehicles and their operators. Specify X10 machine to balance on all new equipment 